Hello everyone and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions. My name is Nick and today we're going to be checking out Gunpoint by developer Tom Francis. This is a 2D side-scrolling espionage stealth game with a bunch of really great twists to it and a really beautiful sense of ambience, a wonderful soundtrack, and from what I've heard, a very interesting story. Now, I know you're probably thinking, hey Nick, didn't you play this once before on the channel? You are correct, I actually did do a preview of this one back in September when it was just an early, I don't even know what we were calling it back then, a preview build of some sort, of, I guess a beta. Uh, and in essence, it's finished its development, it is now out, and this is going to be the actual proper preview or look at the official release version of the game. Uh, so I have some pretty high expectations of this one, it, it, had a, it still has a ton of potential. Uh, and basically the big hook about this one is that you eventually will get this device that allows you to rewire electronic objects and uh, create these really interesting, you know, interplay between having the AI set off other things in the AI and, and creating emergent moments, uh, which can come across possibly a little bit more like puzzles in a way. Uh, but regardless, the story and presentation are probably going to be first and foremost, and we might get to some of that stuff by the middle of the episode. And if I don't, uh, I do urge you to go back and check out the preview build version of this uh, older, you know, video, which I will probably link in the description, or maybe I'll put an annotation up so that way you can jump right to that stuff. Uh, I it won't dawdle anymore. Let's get into the actual game here. Uh, basically, this is the very, very first thing you would see when you started up the game. Uh, so let us join that moment. Here we go. So the very first thing we're greeted with when we start up the game is being thrown from like the fourth story apartment <laughs> building window, uh, hitting into a building and then crashing through a ceiling, and now it says space to answer your phone. Uh, so all of the story elements were not in place uh, when we were looking at this previously, so this is all new stuff. Uh, did you get, just get thrown out of a plate glass window? Yeah, there's, so there's a guy up on the fourth floor of this building who just watched what happened and he is talking to us on the phone. Uh, apparently, this guy that uh, is laying on the ground right now, he's, he's our spy, by the way, he's our protagonist, or maybe somewhat ambiguous protagonist. I'm not sure of his story yet, this is all somewhat new to me. But he's speaking on the phone to that guy up there. It's uh, a little bit of an assumption to assume that he would be alive after that fall, but... I work at the gun company across the road, someone just got thrown out of your apartment window. I don't want to talk about it. So there's another thing, this game has a great sense of humor in addition to the uh, beautiful art style and the lovely soundtrack. I was actually about to call you about something else, but now I'm more interested in this. Well, I'll try to move on. What did you need? My name's Selena Delgado. My boss Rook says you're some kind of freelance spy. I might have a job for you. Want to come up? Sure, buzz me in. Okay, well he's right as rain. So we can take a look around the ground floor here. There doesn't seem to be a whole lot to look at, so let's go upstairs. Uh-oh, who's that? Crap. Well, there goes that guy. Thankfully, we didn't get to know him too well, so it's not too sad of a goodbye. Uh, but let's make our way up. Let's call the elevator down. We're standing right in that security camera, which is actually a plot moment here. Uh, in case it's not already obvious, long falls don't kill you, so the game does go that extra mile to explain stuff like that, because, you know, at first glance you might think, hey, well, it's kind of a fluke I survived that fall in the first place. Uh, but no, that is just a uh, part of this game, and they explain that as well. So yeah, not much to do for him. 41 seconds earlier, what happened? Congratulations on purchasing your new Bullfrog brand Hyper Trousers. That's a terrific sounding name. Uh, caution, a maximum strength jump may shatter glass ceilings, windows, and children? <laughs> Outdoor use only. Hmm. How about I just use those indoors then? Oh, well, that's why. That's why we don't do that. Gunpoint. So here we are. This is the title screen. Design code words Tom Francis, art John Roberts, Fabian von Dommen, and so on. Alright, so here we are. This is our UI for uh, basically what amounts to being uh, the inter-level area where we're getting missions, uh, and there's actually a sort of Mass Effect style dialogue choice option here. Uh, Conway, this is Melanie Rook. Selena Delgado worked for me. Do you have time to talk? Like I say, sure, I didn't kill her. How do you know my name? Um, I didn't kill her. I know, so it's actually kind of like iMessage on your iPhone or something, which is kind of funny. 
Uh, this is actually, like, shows when they're typing and everything. I just watched the footage. Uh, you walked right in front of the security camera on your way to Selena's office after the shots were fired. Uh, but the East Point police won't look beyond an easy conviction. That footage puts you at the scene, and I have to turn it over to them. Why do you care? Selena was a friend. I want her real killer uh, caught. In fact, I want him dead, but once he's in a jail cell, that becomes simpler to achieve. I have to hand that footage over. If I have it, let's make sure I don't have it. I've wiped my copy, but my camera feeds got back or get backed up to data centers in five different off-site locations. If you can wipe them all, you're in the clear, and the police will have to find the real killer. Uh, why can't you wipe them remotely? That's a good question. If you could wipe it remotely, there wouldn't be any point in storing it remotely. Hmm. I guess that's fair. Head to the data sec facility at Port Heath. I'll make sure the front door is open, but you'll have to take it from there. Alright, and she's disconnected. So, the big thing about this game is that you actually do upgrade your spy as you go. There are a variety of things you can buy, which I have no money for, which is why we have to do missions. And then there's also some upgrades you can get for your uh, bullfrog jump strength and your bullfrog charge-up time. I, I assume there are probably other things you can buy as well that open up later. Uh, but for now, uh, we sort of have to take what we can get and see where that goes. So let's get into our first official mission. Uh, on the top floor of the building, there's a bank of servers with a computer nearby. If you can get to that, you can wipe the evidence that uh, you were at our offices when Selena was killed. Uh, I kind of have the idea. If you want to uh, go check that stuff out on your own, I do urge you to go pick up this game, and I will get into some of the details on that very soon. So hold down the left mouse button to aim a jump, and we get this little charging, uh, you know, I don't know what you even want to call this, parabola. <laughs> so we can use that to pick the direction and height at the peak of our jump, and we want to try and aim that at certain moments. And we can even scale up the sides of buildings, which is pretty sweet. Uh, you definitely feel like you're a pretty powerful spy with just by having those few little perks. And you can even grab onto ceilings and uh, shimmy along. He's got some sort of magnetic hands or something. He's a pretty cool guy, actually. So let's go up. And then on floor number two, you'll notice there's actually a laptop over here laying on the ground. We can actually hack that by pressing W. Uh, so we can go copy this document and close it. I think it might give us like some extra points or something. Or at least it's like a bonus objective or something. And if I wanted to, I could actually jump right through this window, but I don't exactly want to. Uh, so then pressing W will hack that. And that is our main objective. We can now head to the subway on the right when we're ready. And we are so ready. I get that the pants protect you from the fall, but I don't know how he gets through that window so easily every time. Alright, so we've gotten $30 and an upgrade point. Uh, we have a, you know, pretty small degree of noise, uh, relatively speaking anyway. And our time was about half of what it could have been to be the worst ever. Oh, it is actually, I think it gives us description of what that... Yeah, an empty bar is the fastest time thought possible, a full bar is double that. Alright, so I was just about on par then. Or, uh, you know, about average. Uh, noises, neighbors could have heard, smashing glass and gunshots, witnesses, and violence. Alright. Good job. Thanks. I should have said walking through tours is my specialty. Our fees are backed up at four more facilities. The others are looking are slightly better guarded, but nothing too taxing. I'll give you the addresses in order of security. Frankly, I have no idea how good you are. Uh, it's a slightly creepy level of micromanagement, but okay. <laughs> You'll see a mission briefing for a job on Proudmore Drive. Take it. Okay. Well, now we are back in the menu. We've got two upgrades and $30 available. Uh, $30 is not actually enough to buy a single thing, so that's fine. Let's get to our upgrades. Uh, we can grab one of these jump strengths, or maybe let's just grab two of those, because I have a feeling this is going to be more useful than the charge-up time. Uh, if you're a decent spy, you shouldn't need to uh, be too worried about jumping out of situations too fast, although I'm sure times like that will come up in the future. I'm told this game is roughly about three hours long on an average playthrough, which seems like a fairly good value proposition to me, and I'm still totally entranced by like the lovely sound effects and music and the, the way this is all put together. It seems like a very well-done package. Uh, the Westfield facility is better security. My guy can open the front door for you, but the door to the server room is secure. Two guards working tonight. Whoever's in the server room can probably open the door to it, so get him to do it for you. 
Got it. I know I'm taking the sort of short approach with uh, respect to the dialogue, but that's okay. Uh, guards will shoot on sight. The cursor turns red in areas guards can see. Jump on a guard to pin him to the ground. So there is a, an example where the guard's vision shows you that the cursor is now red. And if you're right behind him, you are totally safe. So I could, if I want, go over this building and put myself in the line of his sight. I think that's a poor idea. This is probably a better idea. So if we uh, click, we can punch. And then A, to a or D to get off. Uh, if you punch him too many times, I believe you kill them. So you probably don't want to do that. Uh, only guards can use the red hand security or red hand scanners uh, in the dark. Guards will look for a light switch. Guards can't see very far in the dark. So what I can do is use the switch on the wall here and then jump up to the ceiling. And he'll go look with his gun drawn and see what's going on. And I can actually just do the exact same thing I did with the last guy. Pounce on him, punch him, and move on. Alright, we have now hacked, and we are going away from this building. Alright, pay is $55. We've now gotten another upgrade point and $85 total. Uh, that should be enough to buy a crosslink, which is that device that I was talking about. And it actually tells you uh, if a mission requires something like that, which is a pretty nice thing. So crosslink is the thing we can use to rewire electronics, and I'm sure we'll be putting that to very good use. We've also got another upgrade point. I guess I should put one into charge up time. Why not? And let us accept that. I can open the server room doors, our door on Ellis Street, and there are no guards working tonight. You'll have to do it yourself. How? Any building wired in the last 20 years puts everything on a single power grid. Uh, the way things are connected is all handled in software, and software can be hacked. If you've got a crosslink, you can see all the connections and drag them around to work however you want. Uh, make a light switch, open a door, whatever. Alright. Sounds terrific to me. I really like that this now explains some of the backstory about how exactly this all works and why you're doing what you're doing. I mean, I know, you know, that is kind of in essence, what a story not being implemented will mean to a game, but it is just nice to see it in place uh, and see it actually, you know, adding to a, to the game in a meaningful way like that. Alright, so this is the part where we can now use our crosslink. So let's uh, scroll our mouse wheel, and now we can see the power running from the switch to this light. So we can click and drag a line from any device to link it to any other. Uh, if you click from the switch to the door, the switch can open the door. Sounds like a pretty good plan. And just like that, it's actually pretty user-friendly. Uh, so what you can do later on is set up a bunch of things, like if there's a tripwire, like a laser security grid, you can set up that to uh, trigger turning off the lights, and then have a guard walk through it, turn off the lights, use that to fall from the ceiling. And there's all sorts of possibilities for what that can mean for gameplay. Uh, and I think this is essentially... Uh, what makes this game so special, you know, at, at first, but now knowing that there's also a layer of really nice story to it, a whole bunch of upgrades and all kinds of extras, as well as a level editor, which I haven't even mentioned yet, uh, I think the possibilities are rife for endless gameplay opportunities. Uh, so if I link to the switch to the door, you can use the switch to open the door, direction matters, linking them the other way around won't do anything. Okay, so that's the thing that I did wrong there. Oh, so I guess I gotta do one and not the other, right? Oh, I guess it fixed itself on that. There we go. Alright, now we can hack that terminal, and we are good. Essentially, these are, I'm sure, still sort of tutorial levels, so I'm not too worried about uh, if I do something silly here. Uh, we're getting more and more reports of electronics in these post-millennial buildings behaving strangely. Lights going up, but also more serious stuff like electronically locked doors suddenly swinging open. If you see anything like that, put in your report and play it safe. Those doors open way too fast. Yep, that is also kind of a hint. So there's a giant plate glass window here, which we will just burst through. Why not? Kind of funny that she's actually paying me to do these missions that are essentially just helping me. My time was thoughtful. Yeah, I guess that's true. So a little bit more money, another upgrade, and things are still going well here. So I've got $35 in cash, not enough to get any of these useful things here, which are a wire jack uh, to rewire security circuits, uh, which enables crosslink on protected circuits when placed on the circuit box. Alright, so that's pretty useful. Drop shot, uh, land silently from any height, death fluke, 
Some incoming shots miss. Yeah, that is the thing. You will die really fast if you're getting shot at. Hushcracker, Muffle, Breaking Glass, Prank Spasm. These have great names. Uh, booby Trap Electronics. Connect a power socket to another device to electrify it. Long Shot, Rewire Enemy Guns. Oh, I'm not looking forward to there being enemy guns. And Resolver is our handgun. I wonder if you can get through the whole game without using that. Uh, the next, uh, next terminal on Loxley Close. By the way, be careful with power sockets. They'll emit a shock if you cross-link something to them. Okay. So I think we've pretty much got the basic idea of how these missions are going to go, and I assume as we get further into the game, things will just get more and more elaborate, and we'll have to use some really cunning and devious ways to manipulate the electronics to actually make this all work in our favor. Uh, so how can I approach this one? Well, first things first, I can just jump in here and tackle this guard if I feel like it. That, you know, that guy's not even a factor for us, really. Uh, the guy on the second floor, he seems to be hanging out pretty much totally still. He doesn't seem to have a whole agenda or anything. Uh, so if I go up here, I will actually be directly in his line of sight immediately. So what should I do? I can actually do something about this before we even get to that point. Um, how about I set this light switch to activate this light and then see what he does from there. So he's going to go to the nearest light switch to turn that back on. And then he's going to patrol in a horizontal fashion. See, part of learning how to play this effectively is actually sort of learning how to manipulate uh, some of the AI behavior. Oh, and you can even see his uh, field of vision, which is great in this sort of schematic view. So as long as I wait until this guy is facing the other direction, we shouldn't have any trouble with him. Yep, no big deal. So now we can hack that. And we are out. Oh, right, there's a hand scanner. Well, I don't even care about that. I can just jump over the whole building. It's always tempting to sort of leap around like a frog when I'm... <laughs> trying to walk in any direction. It's sort of like how if you're ever playing Zelda or something, you basically just end up rolling across Hyrule Field over and over again. Uh, pay $50. I got a total of 85 and another upgrade point. I'm collecting upgrades like mad now. $85. Still not enough to buy anything, so I assume after the next mission I will unlock the wire jack. I assume that'll probably be necessary. Uh, last one in your clear, the data sec place and on Gershwin and 4th is the biggest and most heavily guarded, but after this there's no evidence linking you to Selena's murder. Sounds good. Uh, the last facility with a copy of the footage, but it's stored on three different servers. You'll need to get on, or get to three different terminals to hack each one. Are you seeing anyone about your backup addiction? <laughs> Well, you never know when a suspected murderer is going to try to s uh, try systematically erasing them. Fair point. Good luck. All right. Very witty dialogue. I love it. All right, so we've got a security camera here, which we can use uh, to activate something whenever it sees an intruder. So essentially, when I walk in the the vision of this, it will then trigger the thing it's connected to, which I can use to my own benefit. Uh, we've got a guard standing up here looking out the window. If I stand or I uh, jump up to this position, he will see me, so I have to obviously avoid that. Um, I can actually do a pretty neat trick here where I link this camera over to this. Oh, you know what, though? This door is locked. I kind of forgot about that. So I actually have to go in through the second floor, which for some reason has an open door uh, overlooking this little guard station or whatever we want to call this. Uh, so actually this camera move is a little bit premature. What I should probably have done is link that to there, and this can just be link to whatever. Oh, right, I still can't use these. Um, how about we link that? So all the things in the world here are now linked to this. Uh, this light shouldn't probably do anything. He'll have to then go in in search of the next light that will help him out. Alright, so once he's off of his mark, I can jump over to this position and hopefully go right through that window. Nope, okay, it's still a little too high. Now, if I do it off here, I should be just fine. Whoa! I didn't think he could see me all that far down. Alright, last autosave from eight seconds ago. We can handle this. Let's not get in his field of vision this time. How about that? If I wait for him to turn around again, though, we should have no problems here. Although, he'll probably turn around when that... Oh, wow. 
Alright, that got a little bit crazy, and I got a little bit lucky there. I'll just jump out of that window. Which, he will still see me if I'm standing in that position. Uh, wait for him to turn around again. Yep, that light still doesn't work. And now the window's broken, so I don't have to worry as much. Provided he doesn't turn around, I think we're in the clear. Alright, cool. So let's hack this, since we're already up here. And this is where things start to get really emergent and kind of special in terms of gameplay. I mean, this this whole thing, I mean, I have a plan in a way, but at the same time, I'm sort of playing it a little bit more in a dynamic fashion, where I don't know what exactly I'm going to be doing from moment to moment. I mean, I'm sure you could make a plan that covers the entire thing, but I'm playing it as I go. Alright, so back down here, we've still got two more guards to worry about, and this guy is standing right in front of that server. Uh, and then we've got another guy on the ground floor, so how am I going to deal with this? I guess I probably should have stayed up here. Uh, what other entrances do we have to speak of? So we've got a hand scanner over here with a door, and I could probably wire... I don't know, this switch, I guess? I don't know, this isn't a switch, that's another hand scanner. Where is there a light switch? This one here. Rig this to over here, perhaps? So when I trigger this... That will open this door, and he will have no idea what's going on. So apparently he is completely unfazed by that concept. And I may as well just jump through that window. Oh, wow! I didn't expect him to come flying like that. Alright, so maybe the, uh, the window idea wasn't such a good idea after all. Can we make it all the way up to this? Yes, we can. Alright, cool. So let's not break the window this time. And hopefully, he is not smart enough to understand... Wow, I can actually go around all those edges and everything. Sense of mobility is quite great in this game. I really enjoy how you can scale all the walls and hang from places that would be generally unexpected like that. Now, if I call the elevator uh, without me on it, I think is probably the safest way to go about this, because I don't actually know uh, if he'll turn around. I should probably hack that while I'm here, right? Oh yeah, alright, so he turns around to look. And there doesn't seem to be anybody there. So let's uh, rewire this to this door. I know I'm doing this extremely slowly. And this camera should be hooked up to basically nothing. Yeah, let's just kill all the connections to that. Now, if I go back up in the longest possible route possible... Alright, that does nothing, and we should be able to tackle him just fine. So there we go. Main objective is complete. Head to the subway on the right when you're ready. Okay. Well, we can take the elevator now, because there is nobody awake to report me to anyone. Guards don't see when you're hidden in an elevator. Right, you can actually hang out inside of the elevator, and then make yourself revealed whenever you want to. So there we go. I've actually erased all of the data. And I think that concludes our business. There's nothing left that links you to Selena's murder, so the East Point police are going to have to look a little harder. If they don't find him, I will. And if they do, I'll know exactly where he is. Good. <laughs> okay. So, this is where the story will start to branch out. This is where I need the wire jack, and things will start to get more and more complex progressively going forward. Uh, and this is probably where I should probably call the video before we get into uh, some sort of spoiler territory here. Uh, but I do want to mention this game is available right now. There are actually three different versions of it, depending on how much you want to get out of it. There's the standard version with, you know, a uh, your usual Steam key. There's a, well, I should mention, first of all, you can get it on Steam or, and this is what I'd recommend, go to uh, the developer's website, pentadact.com, P-E-N-T-A-D-A-C-T.com, and of course the links for this will be in the description, uh, because they will get more of the share from, you know, purchases through their uh, website instead of Steam, because of course they have to take their cut if you go through them. Uh, but yeah, you can get it in three different versions. There's the regular version, which gives you both a DRM-free copy of the game and a Steam key, so, you know, you get the Steam key anyway. There's really no reason not to get it from the actual developer. Uh, you can get the special edition for a little bit more, uh, which gives you the soundtrack and developer commentary, uh, which sounds like a pretty cool thing to do, because it seems like a type of game with uh, a lot of, like, little uh, bits and pieces that you'll probably want to hear from behind the scenes. 
And then there's also a, uh, an exclusive edition, which gives you all the stuff from the previous versions, but you also get a making of Gunpoint, a 40 minute video feature, a prototype pack, which gives you snapshots of Gunpoint's development at nine different stages. Uh, it's got four exclusive tracks and secret beta access list. Uh, adds the option the game menu sign up to our secret beta access list in the future. Uh, suspicious developments games are developed, uh, you get priority then. So it sounds like a pretty good incentive uh, if you're into the vibe and the general feeling of what Gunpoint's all about, which I totally am. I have no reservations in giving this a full thumbs up, high recommendation. Uh, it's not even super expensive, so I think uh, a lot of you guys are going to appreciate this one. Give it a try. There is also a demo, so pretty much uh, no excuses on this one, unless it's just not your cup of tea in terms of gameplay style. Uh, but I, I really look forward to playing around at the level editor a little bit. I want to see what kind of crazy emergent gameplay can happen and how I can exploit the AI to make some silly situations happen. And uh, I have this feeling this is going to be a lot of fun sharing community levels and such. So hopefully you guys will get involved in that as well. And uh, hopefully you'll let me know your comments on this video. I'd love to hear your impressions of it as well as, you know, everything that I've said about it. Kind of curious to know if all the uh, the insights that I've come up with, if they translate to the same to to everybody watching. So please do let me know your opinions on the game in the comments below. So that is going to wrap us up for Gunpoint. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you head on over to the website, indie-impressions.com, so you can catch all the old episodes in case you missed any. Uh, you can sort them by distribution method, by payment style, by tags as far as genre. Uh, even if you have a favorite developer, type them into the search box, you'll be able to pull that right up. So it should be as convenient as possible over there for you. Uh, aside from the website, though, I've got facebook.com slash indie impressions. If you'd like to leave a like over there, it helps me out a little bit, and you'll get every day's new video delivered into your Facebook feed, as well as channel updates, occasional bits of news when I go live for streams. Uh, I do giveaways and contests through there occasionally. Uh, plus, it's just a quick way to reach me if you want to talk about something. Uh, lastly, I do also have a Twitter handle, which is at Rockley Smile, so if you want to get in contact with me about the possibility of showing off your game if you're an indie developer, uh, that is one quick way to start a dialogue. I also do have a contact form, though, over on Indie-Impressions.com. So that is going to do it for another episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you come back again tomorrow for another indie game. I do a new one every single day without exception, uh, so I do hope that you'll join me for that. And of course, again, let me know what you think of this one in the comments below. So that is it, guys. Have a lovely night. Thank you so much, and I will talk to you again tomorrow.